Hi, welcome to our show. Well, hi, everybody. Coming to you somewhat live and semi-weekly from the Quad M World Headquarters located in Helena, scenic North Valley. It's the Quad M Show. Here are your hosts, TJ Damon and Jason Beckers. And once again, we are joined... Hello, everybody. My good good friend of the show and official bartender of Quad M, Marty. How are we doing, buddy? Oh, we're wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, you know, you know, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's iffy, would it be? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll kick it off as we always do. We'll get, in, we'll get into that. Okay. We'll kick it off as we always do. Good, sir. How are those folks on iTunes treating us this week? Ooh, you won. Wow, five stars. <laughs> <laughs> the Hammer House Project <laughs> is the guy who sent it. Uh. What a fun podcast. Uh, mm, title, random in a good way. Five stars. Mm, Melanie's? Sure, why not? It, yeah. If you have time and want to be entertained, listen to the Quad Amp Show. Where else can you hear about Cloverfield movie reviews, autistic chickens, and chumley? Damn right. Right? <laughs> Those are all... And to all those wonderful fine folk that are following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook and all that type of stuff, thank you to Abby Regan, Larry Wentz, uh, Susan Totman, uh, Stephanie Roberts, Cody Smith, Elton Geary, and Randy Harris. Thank you, folks. Randy Harris. God bless. And hey, here again, you know, get those reviews in. Those are always so important. Like and subscribe and all that type of stuff on iTunes or Android. And uh, again, follow and, and, and like on the Facebook and the Twitter, either one.com slash quad M comics. And it's, it's, it's join the party. Why, why, why wouldn't you? That's what I want to know. There you go. Yeah. Goddamn rights. Why you can get free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> all that Discounts type, on haircuts? All that type come of on, stuff. Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> now, you realize this show's going to come out a heck of a lot quicker. Are, are, we, are you going to just continue using Old Lady Spencer Oh, since that one posted? Okay, as we record on Tuesday, what is it, the 5th? Yeah. You know, and that one posted on Monday. Now, probably this probably will post either Wednesday or Thursday, mm. just so it gets out well, and still timely. We'll, we'll still let them use the Old Lady as so long as you both. follow it with a fuck you. Though. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Motherfucker. Sorry. <laughs> Motherfucker. That's, that's the real kicker. <laughs> oh, so but, good, sir. How was how was your week while we recorded, recorded last Wednesday? How was how's your week been since since um, the show? You know, it's been good. Worked some and played some and got some yard work done that made my wife happy. That's why I got scratches all over my arms. But you know. isn't it supposed to be like your back? What the hell are you doing? What are you doing that she's scratching your arm? <laughs> oh no, my wife's not scratching my arm. I did some yard work. So. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. See, that's clarity for the kids. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mumble when I talk. <laughs> mumble when you think. Right. Oh man. <laughs> No, nah, you, you know, and, and of course, you know, Tuesday, you make the make the trip to and to and back from the, the zoo town. Yeah, yep, you know? dropped my daughter off again and everything went great. It's a good it's a good trip. Another beautiful drive in Montana. Good on a beautiful, sunny, sunny, bright Montana day. Yeah, it was hot. Real hot. Yeah. You don't you don't you don't have the AC in the car, do you? Oh no, I got AC. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. No. Well, not not the not the two not the 275. No. You know, two windows down, 75 miles an hour. No. Not that, that air. Okay. No, All right. no, no. I got real AC. Just making sure. I'm, I'm high rolling. And then, you know, kind of going into going into the week here, you know, there wasn't really a whole lot going on during the week. And really, there never is. Yeah. You know, pop over to the old gold dust, say hi, you know, that yeah. type of thing. And yeah. maybe, maybe have a little too many so the switch flips and you just fucking <laughs> bail without saying goodbye to anybody. <laughs> that does happen sometimes. And you get a text the next it's day. Called- <laughs> ghosting ghosting get, get, get a text the next day <laughs> are you okay is everything right. all right are you mad at me well <laughs> no no <laughs> sometimes you got to get checked up on you know <laughs> that's how you uh you know people care 
I'm too busy kicking. I'm too busy kissing your ass to get you on the show. Why would I be mad at you? L O L send. Uh, oh shit! No, you did. You did just ghost though. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I did. It was what you know. Like I say, it's 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 one of those deals where, you know, some I mean, you can you can be like in an okay mood, mm-hmm. and 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 sometimes, you know, the magic elixir. Will 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 get you going in a, in a, in a, in a yeah. better carefree, you know, carefree kind of. And then sometimes it it brings it down a little bit. And you know, you know what? I think I think I'm better off just by myself at home. Right. You know that time. Just yeah. just you know maybe it's just time to go to bed. So then uh, what was it? Uh, so we you know had the the, the Friday thing, and, and then and then Saturday, um, went uh, up to. The, the bustling metropolis of Great Falls with a buddy of mine. Well, you know, as we have mentioned him repeatedly on the show, you yes, know, good, yes. for, good friend Jamie. Yes. I uh, had to get his had to get his Harley worked on because he he just got himself a new one. Yeah, I need those kind of problems. <laughs> <laughs> I drive to a different town. <laughs> just go, <laughs> just go. But um, um, yeah, no, I mean, went up there, you know, stopped in, and you know, they're there at the Holly shop and checked shit out. And of course, the minute I walk in, the salespeople are right on top of you. Of course, they're there. Oh, hey, so what are you, what are you planning on walking out of here with today? <laughs> My <laughs> dignity. <laughs> 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 oh no! I'm just here. I'm 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 the I'm, I'm my buddy's ride. He's getting his shit. Oh, you ride? I was like, wait, no. Did I just not tell you? No, no. I'm not buying anything. Here, friend. He's getting his shit worked on. But thank you though so right. much because you know if if the eyeballs were better, I'd probably consider being a a, a cycle enthusiast. Yeah. You know, Jamie was actually asking me that. Yeah. You know, you ever think about getting a bike? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, hold on. I can do a better. I can do a better Jamie impression. <laughs> hey, DJ, you ever think about getting a bike? <laughs> 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 to, to which I reply, no. Mm. You know, because I mean, like I said, you, know, you get the shitty eyeballs. My reaction time is already bad enough as it is. Yeah. Get out on the fucking highways and byways. And all you are is basically you are only protected by a leather jacket and a helmet. If shit goes wrong, you go flying, you know, there is, you know, serious injury. And if you can't, you know, I mean, yeah, you can look in the fucking rearview mirror, but if you still can't, like, see the car and, you know, all that type of stuff, I worry about that type of thing. So, yeah. no, you know. It's, it's definitely scary. There's that aspect to it. I like it and I appreciate it, but it's you know, yeah. you know not 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 in my future. Yeah. But we did we did stop over at uh, Kelly's Comics in Great Falls, hmm. and you know I the first time I had gone in there I wasn't too impressed. Uh, you know, because he, he, he kind of, you know, he was kind of a little standoffish, and you know that type of thing, and yeah. blah blah blah. But then after dealing with him when I uh, was at the um, uh, the Great Falls show back like last October, you know, and we and did a little bit of haggling with him. Yeah. You know, I realized okay, he's he's a good businessman. Yeah. Because I went in to see if they carry some issues of Enigma, mm-hmm. and at that point, all I had was the digital. So I was going to various places, showing him on the Kindle, this and that, and he was like, nah, 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 "You're going through Diamond? I'd order through Diamond." I'm like, "No, I'm not going to." Oh, okay, and just left it at that. Yeah. Well, at the show. His co-worker, whomever it may be, said, you know what? Yeah, no, no, we'd heard about you from, you know, Glenn Dive show on a couple of shows previous. We'd love to get some copies, sir, you know, sure. And, and again, I was like, fantastic, cool. So I'm like, maybe three copies, you know, and, yeah. and, and they can get from there. So when we went in, I started doing the initial looking looking around and all that type of stuff. And then I asked him, I said, so, you know, I'm, you know, I, you know, write and draw the series Enigma. You guys have picked them up a while back. Did you guys sell I'd sell them out? Do you need more copies? It's like, well, no, sure. So I went back to the car and I got it because I always carry cases of them in my car yeah. just to be on the safe side. Right. And I bring them back in. And I bring them in. It's like, oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, no, here. He opens up his fucking file cabinet and pulls him out, and he's like, "Yeah, did you get issue four done? Because we're planning on, you know, we were, we were just planning on selling him as a four pack." Whoa! <laughs> so uh, there's so now 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 I have another point of pressure <laughs> to get these to get fucking issue number four done. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly's Comics, for, for for providing that to me. Wow! 
So so yeah, we'll get issue number four done, and then they're going to sell them off as a as, as a, a as four a, pack as that's... a four pack of that first story arc. It's so a cool idea. Yeah, yeah, so that's cool. You know, sell them off as like a ten buck deal, and right. you know whatever they want to do with it. Fuck right on. Cool. cool. But uh, going back into the the area because it's just your standard little sublet strip mall size type of deal. Yeah. Go a little bit farther into the back there, and that's where they have all the the boxes of the comics and stuff. And they've got he does a really cool deal where, you know, pri- books are either individually priced, mm-hmm. or he'll have a green dot on them, or he'll have like an orange or a red dot. Right? I I say orange. He's you know Jamie's like it's red. It's red. God damn, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine, whatever. But these green dotted ones, you can get ten for ten bucks. Mm-hmm. And then the red dot ones is like three for ten bucks. So I'm like, fuck, ten bucks, get myself ten comics. All right, fantastic. And as we were leaving, he says, oh, did you check the free comic book day table over there? So then get another five or six books out of that deal. Yeah. You know, of course, gifted one to. I was going to say, I was a recipient of one of them. Did you read it yet? Uh, I was skimming through it. Yeah. Yeah, it messes <laughs> with me going. Yeah, well, because, okay, so so it, it, what I what I got for uh, Marty here, I, I picked up the free comic book day of Dragon Ball Z Super. Right, yeah, the, the yep. latest, the latest thing going on with Toonami and all that type of stuff, and bringing back Frieza and all that shit, and and they have it because it's it's because it's manga, it's 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 real Japanese manga. You read it in in the American sense. You read it back to front, yeah, because that's how the Japanese read their books. Yeah, I don't know why, but you know what? Maybe maybe they're majority left-handed. I don't know. Right. And I don't know. It's just, just the way the wind blows. But yeah, no, I figured, yeah, yeah, Dragon Ball Z guy, and and just so you know that I didn't have any heat with you, you know, there was no heat, no nothing off of me just bailing out that night. Get you, get you a free funny book. Yeah, and I did appreciate it. Hey, it's what a guy. It's what I. It's what I do for my friends. I give till it hurts. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, and then uh, and then and then from there, you know, went and. You know, uh, went and had some lunch and then dropped him off and made the beeline home to attempt to try to fucking get the show put out. Because we'd recorded last Wednesday. Wednesday. yeah. And I did not get the show, like, f- edited and posted until Sunday. Mm-hmm. Because for the last, like, week, I've had the, the, the major computer issues. Yeah. Um, and the computer would continuously crash... You like freeze and crash like every 15 minutes. I mean, it was a nightmare. When we were recording the show, every, every, every bit, like not segment, but like when we were done talking about a topic, I would have to stop recording, save, and then continue recording and try to, you know, work editing magic so it was seamless going yeah. through uh, because the fucker would just keep crashing. Yeah. But I re- so I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, <laughs> I was they, saying. they weren't. They weren't. They, they weren't. They don't know what's going on. Remember, just because, just because, just because you were, and I'm telling the story, and you were there. Just picture everybody, all five people that listen to this show are in this room right now. <laughs> oh shit! <There> you <laughs> but you said you said you listened to it, you know, on on the way to and back from 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 uh, the zoo town there. I did. It, did it? Did it seem? Smooth? Did it? Did it seem like it, there wasn't too bad? No, no, it was. It was great. Okay. I couldn't tell. Like okay. I had already forgot that that's what we did until you just <laughs> mentioned it. Well, well, that's youth. That that's the fall is a youth catching up on the brain cells oh, of the old. Right. Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, all told, you know, it, it, it wasn't that bad. And then, uh, oh. Remind me, did you work Sunday? Were we out there? No, I did not have to work okay. this Sunday. Okay, okay. Yeah, because yeah, once no. again, you know, the follies of the youth, destroying the brain cells yeah. of the old, I can't remember, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we went out to the lake on Sunday. Okay. It was, like when we got out there, it was beautiful. And then, of course, like Montana weather, storms rolled in and passed, and then it was beautiful, you know, that whole. Yeah. Oh, well, you guys, you guys went to Virginia City. Uh, I did not go. Oh, you didn't go? No, it was a special trip between uh, 
Mackenzie and her dad. Oh, okay. Well, because I saw the picture. The picture. And it actually it didn't end up being Virginia City. It was Phillipsburg. Oh. And they had a wonderful time. Okay. And then they actually they picked up the daughter Saturday. It was a big old surprise. Oh. Mackenzie surprised me. Oh. Yeah. So How was, about that? It was awesome. How come you didn't go? I was doing yard work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, Marty, the chores aren't I, done. You don't had, get to come play. I had a honey-do <laughs> list a mile long. And I haven't touched it for months. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Well, you know, we'll go ahead here. And as we wrap up the first segment, I got us a Z-List celebrity <gasps> Follower of the week. Getting some love from the stars of stage, screen, music, and multimedia. The Quad M Z List Celebrity Follower of the Week. Good. And they're actually they're it's like they're lining up. I've got I've got like I got like five of them. Boom. But obviously I only do one at a time because you know that's how you get mileage. Right. And if any of the fuckers drop off, which they're and. so inclined to do, <laughs> once they realize who in the hell they're following, I guess. <laughs> But so this week, have you have you heard of Brody Smith? Brody Smith. That name sounds familiar. Well, Brody Smith, and I, I read this from the opening segment of Wikipedia, because mm-hmm. that's where I get all my information from. Uh, Brody Smith is an American Ultimate Disc League player and a trick shot performer. Mm. Brody won two USA Ultimate College Championships, <laughs> playing for the University of Florida, as well as two national club championships. First in 2012 with Austin's Double Wide, and again in 2014 with Denver's Johnny Bravo. He has played professionally with the AUDLs, Indianapolis Alley Cats, the Chicago Wildfire, the Dallas Roughnecks, and Jacksonville Cannons. Mm-hmm. He's a frisbee disc guy wow ultimate frisbee but here's where it gets better uh brody rose to internet fame in 2011 when his frisbee trick shots video went viral on youtube uh brody's videos have made the espn top plays segment numerous times and he's also been featured by the huffington post and other major media outlets uh he has a sponsored line of merchandise produced by uh discstore.com hmm so he's been on ESPN. He's a trick shot guy. Oh. Here's the big one. Oh. He also appeared in the 28th installment of The Amazing Race. <gasps> well, no shit. Finishing fifth. Hmm. Good job, Brody. Way to be. Internet superstar, ESPN top plays guy, and he was on The Amazing Race. Yeah. I'd love to get an interview with him because, because you know, my thing was, I always said that myself and, 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 and a good friend of the show, Jamie, I always said the two of us should be on Amazing Race. Yeah. I think we could win it all well. because of the fact. And, and here's the, 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 the two problems that I face with this uh-huh. is that number one, uh, uh, trying to get Jamie in front of a camera or a microphone or anything like that is damn near impossible. Yeah. Talks the talk, <laughs> <laughs> but the walk in just doesn't happen. So there's that. But then also, and I've told him what my strategies are yeah. when it comes to amazing race. Yeah. And that's fuck with everybody possible. It's a good strategy. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Exactly. And of course, he wants to be like Johnny fucking, you know, Mr. Pure. Da, da, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, keep, I keep going. Let me do an exact impression <laughs> of Jay. That's cheating, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be doing that, fucker. You can't be doing that, fucker. <laughs> Y'all come out cheating like that. That's not how you win. That's shady as fuck. <laughs> oh shit! You goddamn noob! <laughs> goddamn noob! <laughs> a noob. Well, you know, because I've I've had the things, you know, where like I would, if people are driving, I would go out of my, I would, I would go out of my way to flatten some tires. Yeah. Maybe perhaps if somebody has, you know, a spare backpack that I might be able to leave in the middle of an airport and tell security, hey, hey. that backpack, and and it was, it was those guys those that left them right over there, right there. How awesome would that be? That's what I would do. Yeah. And the, my only things would be, number one, having having him put a put put a stop to the shenanigans in an effort to win, uh-huh. or, or number two, if, if CBS network officials called shenanigans and pulled us off. Right. I mean, you might have to sign something that says you can't fuck with the people. 
to which to which I would then look at the contract. I would look at them and I and I would say, "Do you want honest winners or do you want compelling TV?" Ooh. What do you want, Johnny Pureheart? <laughs> you be the judge. Honest competition or gigantic ass ratings? <laughs> what do you want? Hit them where it fucking hurts. That's what I say. We'll give America's Got Talent a run for their money. Oh, I've I've got no <laughs> I've got no talent. No, I mean the ratings. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. ratings of the show. With, <laughs> with you on it. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not saying you go on America's Got Talent. All way. right, all right, TJ, go ahead, show us here. All right, all right, all right, Howie, pull my finger. Pull my. Finger. <laughs> that would just be sad. <laughs> well, if as long as I didn't poop myself, we'd be okay. No, that should be your talent. <laughs> what pooping myself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <shit. laughs> Today I present to you my special talent: weak internal pressure. Weak internal pressure. <laughs> and, a, and a very sketchy sphincter. Thank you, <laughs> dude. We gotta go. <laughs> Sharded. <laughs> oh, so with all that being said, Brody Smith, thank you so much yeah, for was... joining us in the Quad M playground. Well, we took that a totally different direction. Well, that's what we do. Yeah. Remember, random, five oh. stars, random. Congrats, Brody. But in that a good way. Awesome. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, we will come back with a little bit of Fredgy Samford and hot takes, as is always the second segment. It's the Quad M Show. Stay tuned. Have you checked out QuadMProductions.com lately? QuadMProductions.com is your direct access hookup to order the Enigma comic book series and download the Quad M Show podcast. Check the appearances page for upcoming events and contact us with any questions or comments. Don't be the only lonely soul who's missing out on all the fun. Visit us today at quadamproductions.com. That's quadamproductions.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Marty, the official bartender of the Quad M Show, and I'd like to be your bartender too. If you're in the Helena area, stop by and visit me at the Gold Dust Bar and Casino on Cedar Street on Wednesday nights or Bowser's on Dredge Drive Friday and Saturday nights. Use the special discount code given out during the next segment on your next visit and get a free drink courtesy of myself and the Quad M Show. I'm Marty. I like to party. Reviewing film and TV from yesterday and today. It's the Quad M Movie Minute. Having come out over a month ago, yeah, we're a little bit late with the review on this guy, but unfortunately with uh, co-hosting and computer issues, it couldn't get it out until now. So, Alien Covenant, uh, starring Michael Fassbender and Kevin Larson, continues the Alien franchise and attempts very poorly to try to bridge the gap between Prometheus and Alien. Now, don't let a lot of the reviews fool you. It's a good film. It's not bad, it's not great, but it's good. Michael Fassbender is well worth the ticket price alone. He does an amazing job reprising his role as David, the evil android from Prometheus, and also introducing the new good android, Walter, who uh, is on the Covenant ship, along with uh, Catherine Watterson's character of Rachel, and a whole host of other couples who summarily become nothing more than alien fodder. Now, while a lot of people are going to dog this movie because it leaves you asking more questions than it does giving answers, I can agree in part. There should have been a little bit more time spent in dealing with the aftermath and the lead up from Prometheus. It's not so much a bridge between Prometheus and the Alien franchise as it is just a character from Prometheus happens to show up in an Alien movie. For the casual moviegoer, I'd say if you feel if you don't feel that you need to watch it, don't worry about it. However, for the Alien fans, I'm sure you've already seen it, but if you haven't, make sure to check it out before it leaves theaters. Uh, Ridley Scott's view of the vastness of space, as well as the lush planetside landscape, is actually quite a sight to behold on film. As far as the aliens in and of itself goes, eh, you've got everybody talking Xenomorph, Neomorph, Protomorph, Mighty Morph, and Power Rangers, who gives a fuck? The fact is, we finally got an alien here. And they're actually pretty badass, and the gore effects are pretty stellar. Despite everyone saying how this movie tanked, hey, $175 million worldwide off of a $97 million budget, 
to me, that's not tanking. It's just not living up to the expectations of current blockbusters. All in all, it's worth the time and the effort. Give it a chance, check it out, you won't be disappointed. Quad M gives Alien Covenant an 8 out of 10. second segment of this here quad m show again we are your host i am tj and i'm marty welcome back to the show and this segment is brought to you in part by mirror mirror salon and spa now i know you folks are seeing though you folks are seeing those pics online and you're saying damn how does tj get that awesome hair well a very small part of it is genetics the big credit however kids goes to shauna and all the fine folks over at mirror mirror now if you're in the helena area Make your reservations today for all of your hair, nail, or spa needs. Walk-ins, as well as dudes, are always welcome. Dudes, go. (laughs) Check them out. Oh. If you, as a male, a female, or whatever you want to identify yourself as, hop into the uh, Mirror Mirror, and you tell them Quad M sent you, you get yourself five bucks off any service they provide. You know what that is? That's beer money, son. Yeah, it's a good deal. Oh, <laughs> uh, give them a call today, 406-603-0644, or stop on in at 2043 North Last Chance Gulch in Helena. That is Mirror Mirror Salon and Spa. Yeah, go, go see him. <laughs> Come on, a, people. Get yourself a little. Get yourself. Get yourself a little. Go look pretty. Get yourself something nice. Speaking of pretty and get yourself some... <laughs> Let's talk Fred G. Sanford. Moron. You're a moron. Idiot. Idiot. Don't. You always so stupid. Did you take lessons? The FGS Award for Excellence in Stupidity. Damn it. Yes. Oh. Uh, this week, an FGS Award for Excellence in Stupidity. Uh, this one's a dandy. A porn actress is facing a domestic battery charge after allegedly uh, after allegedly socking her boyfriend in the face during a post-coital quarrel. Get it up, go! Let go of it! Tell that bitch to be cool! Say bitch, be cool! Say bitch, be cool! Tell that fucking bitch to chill! Be cool! Chill that fucking bitch out! Police report post Post coital cordial. <laughs> post post coital cordial. You know, you know what? You know what? That's our phrase that pays this week. <laughs> post coital quarrel. Post post coital coil. And they have to say it five times five fast. Five times fast. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. You, you can pull that off, kids. You're drinking. You're drinking for free. <laughs> Top shelf. <laughs> you earned it. Uh, Lauren K. Scott walloped the victim. No name given. Uh, Saturday, in his Palenas Park home, uh, the man suffered a swollen lip with a cut during the 4.55 a.m. confrontation. As detailed in the arrest affidavit, the 23-year-old Scott uh, would not get off the phone after having sex with her boyfriend, who asked Scott to leave the residence. Uh, Scott, cops say, became upset and struck her bow of six months in the face. You big dummy, see what you did? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott was arrested on a misdemeanor domestic battery charge and, uh, let's see, was booked into the county jail. After a day in custody, Scott was released on her own recognizance and ordered to have no contact with the victim. Uh, as noted on her arrest affidavit, uh, Scott identified her employer as porn industry. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of that one. That's right. In adult film circles, Scott is known as Dakota Sky or also Coda Sky. Uh, since 2013, she has appeared in uh, scores of <laughs> scores <laughs> scores of X-rated uh, X-rated productions, and was a 2015 Best New Starlet nominee at the AVN Awards. Uh, let's see, Scott who started as a webcam girl, uh, stars <laughs> stars in such videos as <laughs> Slut Puppies 9, Anal Buffet 10, and Milkmaids. 
<laughs> uh, anal buffet 10 that's right that's right oh, and, mean nine <laughs> more before the 10th well you know she also can be seen opposite uh su- porn superstar james dean that's with two e's mm. in the 2016 production i came on james dean's face six <laughs> <laughs> collect the whole set kids <sighs> i can't imagine doing anything else for a living Scott told AVN, uh, awards are always nice, but being able to do what I love and give back to the people who love it just, just is, 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 is its own reward. (laughs) In a, in a hand, in a handwritten motion, uh, that was filed, Scott asked a judge for permission to travel to Los Angeles, where she reported that she lives with her husband, Zachary Lecomte (laughs) Goble. <laughs> Keeping it classy. That's <laughs> what those porn stars do. But I love you. I've never, I never belted I never you in the face. Beat you up. <laughs> That's for my bitches. That's for my bitches. <laughs> you're my, you're my, you're my bottom bitch, you're Zachary. Bottom bitch. You got your main bitch. Know what I'm saying? That be your bottom bitch. That bitch rank higher than all the other bitches, but she's still a bitch. Know what I'm saying? Kick me out the house, will you? <laughs> Show you, daddy. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know anything about banging some other dude's wife, but what I will tell you is if you're going to do that, don't go for the one that's going to swing at you. No, That's no. never a good thing. Um, according to marriage records, uh, the couple were wed last April in Vegas. <laughs> Again, keeping it classy. Yes. Uh, Lecomte, I bet it was a drive through <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to get some nuptials and a side order of wings. <laughs> side order of wings. <laughs> Thank you, drive through. <laughs> uh, Lecomte Goble has recently worked as a booking agent for Milo Yamanambatopoulos. <laughs> The alt the alt right author and provocateur, uh, Lecomte Goble, uh, his Facebook page lists him as ch- <coughs> lists him as chief product officer uh, for Yemalem de la Populis. I, I it's it literally it it's works. all Greek to me. It works. <laughs> and and I, I posted up there the, uh, the the before. Well, I guess you could say the before and after pics that that mugshot. Yeah, that's a good one. That's some. That's she- some. That's some 4.55 a.m. I just fucking <laughs> took a swing at my my, uh, my, my my boyfriend. My boyfriend. My other my other guy. My other lover. Yeah. But I will say, you know, thanks to the art of airbrushing and makeup, she does she does clean up she relatively up. pretty. Yeah. She really does. <laughs> Math. <laughs> Not even once kids. Uh, so Not to you. <laughs> Lauren K. Scott, alias Dakota Sky. Congratulations. <laughs> You, whore, are the (laughs) Reggie Samford Award winner for excellence in stupidity. You dummy! (laughs) So proud of you. (laughs) So proud. You know, your folks, your folks are proud. No daddy (laughs) issues there, I'm sure. None. (laughs) Keep them off the pole. (sighs) News and notes. From all four corners of the pop culture world. And the sign gotta stay hot! You gotta stay hot! You gotta stay hot! It's time for some hot takes. All right. Now, I don't like to do too much when it comes to local news stories or anything like that mm-hmm. uh you know but 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 good friend of the show uh Derek crab had had pointed out his his enjoyment of listening to the tale of woe involving grimace and and the blonde ambition i remember well news reports kind of came out today <laughs> Grim, grimace got herself involved in a little accident <laughs> you done fucked up <laughs> Crashed her car into a fucking ditch while she was drunk off her ass and is, 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 you know, the news article really didn't go too much into the charges of drunken driving, but more into the child endangerment because she had her child in the fucking car. You dick. Yeah, they looked down on that. Oh, my God. You know, so. and then she's sitting there talking about, uh, you know, being, being more concerned about the safety of her car than her kid. Yeah, that's that's a great parent right there. That's what. It's a fucking train wreck, you know. <laughs> Just wait till sixteen years later when the kid pulls up this article about his mom, and <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, what a terrible person she is. Well, I mean, it could, it could go one of two ways, mm-hmm. you know. If, if 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 the kid's taken away until she gets her act fucking cleaned up, 
then then maybe the kids got in a fight get you know kids got a fighting chance right if not kids gonna be a fucking train wreck tale told by other people exactly. and the cycle continues yep. itself yep. it's never good it isn't you know and i remember that night when i when i met grimace And the stars were out. Oh, Jesus. Cr- yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly what that... Oh, my God. <laughs> no, you just... You know, you, you, the, the, the first time you fucking meet somebody, you can tell right off the bat if they're a fucking train wreck waiting to happen or, or what. And, and and right then and there, you know, and then and then, and then as I fucking kindly, you know, kind of like, 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 like potted plant my way over to, to her friend, you know, mm-hmm. the one that I was interested in, that's... Well, I'm ready to go. The one I wanted to get all these words in here. <laughs> Give me some chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> all the blonde ambition squeezing the leg. <laughs> you should go outside and talk to her. No, I shouldn't. That's a terrible idea. That's a horrible idea. No, 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 no. I would prefer not to do that. But thank you, though. And, and and this little story just justified that. So yes, the continuing adventures of Grimace right. here on the Quad M Show. We can write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Tales of train wrecks. Tales of train wreck. Oh boy, yeah, no, I could I, I could fill a book. Edition I could, Helena. <laughs> I could I could fill a book with it. Classic classic Helena train wrecks. No, and 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 you know what? All of them are worse than the the, the fucking February second accident of eighty nine. <laughs> For you kids, go ahead and Google that February second eighty nine Helena Montana train wreck, and you'll get that joke. Yeah. All right, so back into the good stuff, the lighthearted stuff. Uh, Wonder Woman came out this weekend. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, open up uh, opening weekend raked in over a hundred mil. That's good. So there, you know, and then I don't know what the worldwide numbers are, but you know, with one hundred and forty two million dollar budget you figure they, they're, they're making they're their doing good back. yeah they're, they're making their money back oh yeah Are you take the missus to it uh yeah i think i'm gonna try to i would i would i'm not gonna spoil the the the, the review for you oh and and kids yes you got the alien covenant review there in between segments one and two you will also get the wonder woman review between two and three ah twofer well with all the f- Fucked up situations involving the goddamn computer. You you owe it to him. I, I kind of do. do. Throw him a bone. Right. You know, this is what I do. This is what I do. Because much like much like uh, Dakota Sky and porn, I love to give back. I love to give back. I love to give back. <laughs> <laughs> porn chicks. No, I, you know, I was, I, I, it wasn't that I was pleasantly surprised because I, I kind of went in saying that this should be a good movie mm-hmm. and it did not disappoint. That's good. Um, you know, when, when, Dawn of Justice was first coming out. I was not sold on Gal Gadot mm-hmm. uh, being Wonder Woman. I thought she was too skinny. I thought she was just too tiny and live. Yeah. You know, I, my 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 perfect envisionment of Wonder Woman would be like say late nineties, early two thousand China. Shoot. You know, buff, tall. You know, of course, you know she had the operation to make herself look a little bit more feminine. Yeah. You know, and had the boob job done. You know, steroids. Well, <laughs> do what you gotta do, right? I'm not. I'm you not, only live once. Exactly, Yolo. Well, yeah. exactly, you get that fuck out of Yolo. Get the fuck out of here. That shit. No, don't don't try to be hip for the kids. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm the furthest thing from hip. Trust me. Hip replacement, maybe. Hip replacement. <laughs> you know, but but um, you know, with her and uh, and, and Chris Pine. Great chemistry on film, I thought. You know, is and 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 it's just it's one of those movies where from beginning to end, you're in. You know, it it, mm-hmm. it involves you. It's not action packed all the way through, but the story is motivating enough, and there's not really too many dead spots to yeah. where it's gonna it's gonna kill it off for you. Um, here again, I don't know. I don't know about spending the extra money for 3D. Mm-hmm. There's the problem with going to a movie is you can tell where those 3D spots are. Oh yeah, not not that it's fucking like Friday the Thirteenth Part Three blatant where they've got a fucking stick pointed right at you type of a deal. Um, 
but you can definitely tell the way it was it was shot and edited and produced that this is where that depth where that would come yeah. into play. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean, if you if you don't watch it in three D, not a big loss, yeah. not a big loss. But but I I would recommend you know if you dig on those type of movies, and plus you know you can you can qualify because it's one of them you can qualify it as a chick flick. Yeah, this is true. You know, you yeah. can get out there and McKenzie be all fucking woo, wah, 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 swinging fists. Next thing you know, you're you're on the fucking smoking gun blotter too. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. Anorexic like. bartender gets ass whooped by girlfriend <laughs> after friend. after screening Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, anorexic? I'm not anorexic. I'm just skinny. Anorexic Can't bartender with grip of steel. Grip of steel. With grip That's of right. steel. Gets his ass whooped. Uh, yes, yeah, she would kick my ass. <laughs> She's so fiery. and She would totally... Oh, there's no attitude on her at all. None whatsoever. <laughs> 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 all right, so all of you kids out there, if you listened to last or the last show, uh, you'll know that we had ourselves a little news item regarding the uh, Phoenix Comic Con and, and the wacky events that transpired. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have on, we have on the air right now uh, someone who is actually there for the entire thing. Now, whether or not he's got it firsthand, secondhand, or possibly even thirdhand, we'll find out. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, good friend of the show, good friend of mine, sponsor of our third segment, ladies and gentlemen, Chris McClanahan. Chris, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. I would have been doing better if I had a chance to kill Dave, Jason David Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. So we'll lead up to that. But you know, you know, first, first, let's go ahead and kind of, kind of play with the nipples here first a little bit. How you doing, man? I haven't fucking seen you in like forever. <sighs> Jesus, I've been so busy; it's insane. I, I've, I've, I'm going whole hog with the cons this year. Um, I think I'm prepping to leave tomorrow for my uh, I think it's like the 19th con of the year and I have over a dozen lined up beyond I, that I know holy shit dude I sit there <laughs> I'm I, you know it's like I haven't been on the roads I haven't been to it I haven't been working a con since like October but holy shit man you you are just out there slaying the fucking dragon man you are doing awesome at least at least according to, you know, Facebook posts, you're doing awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a difference between on the road a lot and doing awesome at some of these shows. But Yeah. Oh no, I hear you. <laughs> that's why that's that's why as far as as far as people know, perception is reality. Yes. So so you know, we're the Quad M show is a million dollar, you know, m- revenue generating machine. We are the the best damn podcast out there. Uh, but in reality, Hey, based off of that couch I slept in on your mansion last time I was there, that's similar. The Quad M, yes, the Quad M World Headquarters. Yes. <laughs> the official Quad M fold-away bed. I, my retina still hurt from that scan. Well, well, you know, you know, it's it's all about protection. You know, we got to make sure that no, you know, godless heathens show up into into the Quad M World Headquarters. That's that's. You are in Montana, so there is that risk. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. <laughs> No, but I mean, you're, you know, like, a, I mean, you're just, you're just a, a busy fucking dude. So, okay. So, so we'll, we'll let, let's start from the beginning on this Memorial Day weekend. Phoenix yes. is running its annual, you know, one of its two annual shows. And, mm-hmm. and of course I'm on like the bottom of the waiting list. So, you know, they, they, they continuously tickle my balls saying, oh, we'll let you know if something opens. So, right. so I, I guess first. How did you get into to Phoenix? Because I know the waiting list on that's the shit. You know, I've been on the wait list for almost three years now. Uh-huh. And it's one of those things where I was not just signing up each time. I would intentionally, like, harass the uh, vendor's floor manager and just be like, hey, you got a space for me this year? This is what I've been working on. These are the other shows I've done. I'd really like to get in. Because I found that just applying to the shows just doesn't cut it for some of these bigger shows, especially with these massive, massive wait lists. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Yeah. Same, I mean, you, same thing with Emerald City is the same way. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I don't know if that show is ever going to happen for me. I've been harassing them for years. Mm-hmm. But I just, you know, it's one of those things where you got to be a thorn in their side, but you've got to be a thorn that doesn't necessarily irritate so much as just kind of tickle. Sure. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I finally got in. She contacted me and was like, hey, I have a space for you up on the third floor, um, which is a new thing for them. They've never done vendors up on the third floor. It's always right. been 
the Hall of Heroes. Yeah. Which is yeah. where they put their celebs and their cosplayers. So I was like, hey, you know what? It gets me in the door. And they're first come, first serve as far as re upping while you're at the show. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, shit, that means I'll get a chance to get down onto the main floor next year if this if this floor blows for me. Right, so right. I was like, hell yeah, get in. And and rubbing out, and, and it doesn't hurt being able to rub elbows with Alan Tudyke. Right. Yeah, 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 he was just, I saw him one time. You, fuck, <laughs> you fucking name dropper. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Van Dyke also waved and smiled at me. Dick Van Dyke was there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty rad, actually. He looks good, dude. Well, or, geez, like 140 years old. I was going to say, he's like 85 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. You know, he's, he's in Stan Lee years now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I was genuinely surprised to see him there, but it was a pleasant surprise prize so okay so when like the I, I i think it was what the thursday when you were setting up the show and and, and you know you're getting all getting all your shit ready um i saw a post that you had made stating and 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 i'm asking this because i i just want to have clarification because it seems like the news reports and what i was getting from you know vendors that i know that were there mm-hmm. um just to straighten out the timeline here, that Thursday, you were right. saying that they had already or were already instituting, uh, you know, the ban on cosplay, uh, 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 paraphernalia and that type of stuff. Well, okay, so what happened was Wednesday is technically set up day. Okay. It's a four day show, so it runs Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Which is monstrous. It's super long. Uh, yeah. But I guess. Wednesday, we set up the show. Everything went relatively smoothly as far as that's concerned. Um, It was Thursday where shit kind of happened. And essentially, uh, they they hadn't instituted anything. Their security was an absolute atrocious joke on Thursday. (laughs) We had – there were voluntary weapons check areas that you were supposed to kind of just wander over to once you got inside the building. But there were were no door checks. There was no kind of – metal detector or security contingent watching you as you went in or anything like that. There were just a couple of volunteers checking to see if you had bracelets on. No shit. It was the worst security I've ever oh seen at a show, and I've worked some really low-key shows. Yeah. Well, okay, so for you kids out there, if you go to a, a larger venue, like say if you're doing a – if you're going to a Wizard World show or if you're doing the Salt Lake Fan X or Salt Lake Comic Con or I'm assuming Rose City in, in Portland is going to be the same yeah. way. Any of these larger shows, when you walk in, the first thing you have is generally like four or five, like like your six to eight foot long banquet tables. And mm-hmm. you'll have staff behind these tables that will say, stop here. We need to check your bag. Now, right. they'll do that for the ten- attendees most of the time, yeah, a few exceptions, but most of the time, vendors like us, we just get the walkthrough. We just flash the, the, the red bracelet or whatever other color that the vendors have, right. and they'll say, oh, he's a vendor. He can go. So, you know, but, but, but normally with these, you know, larger venue type shows, security is uh, maybe I wouldn't say tight. But it's definitely there. They're checking yeah, it's at least in. present. Yeah, yeah. They're making <laughs> sure that they're running a safe show for everybody involved. And so, from what you're saying, I mean, they hardly had shit for this. Yeah the the first day we were genuinely surprised at how little security there was on the floor. There were a couple of police officers kind of floating around, but they were primarily outside the venue, kind of directing traffic across the street and that kind of thing there right. inside it was almost entirely clearly just volunteers they weren't even security crew or anything like that now did they say if this was a budgetary thing or they you know they they never said anything explicit certainly i mean they're not going to be like oh yeah it was our bad it's our fault this happened oh it never like is <laughs> uh but what concerns me is i believe this is the year that phoenix by law had to actually require their volunteers in quotation marks to pay a membership fee to be a volunteer oh really yeah because they 
they had some sort of problem with the number of hours they were requiring them to work because they're not run as a nonprofit like so many other cons are. Sure. That they had to actually pay them an hourly minimum wage wage. Oh, so then you run into labor laws and that type. Right. Of thing. Gotcha. Okay. And All so right. I feel like from a volunteer standpoint, they were shorthanded because of that. Gotcha. And this is the first year I've done this show, so I don't have any frame of reference. Maybe that's how light they always are on the volunteers, but it seemed incredibly scant as far as volunteers were concerned. Right, right. Oh, see, and that, yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing was just kind of bizarro world to me when I was when you when I was hearing about this. So, okay, let's let's get to the main event here. Now, <laughs> did this happen Thursday or Friday? I believe when, this happened Thursday. When 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 thirty year old Matthew Sterling uh, decided he was gonna 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 make his presence felt and and say hello to the Green Power Ranger Jason David Frank. So okay, I guess first off, in comparison to where you were at now, like I said, you were near Alan Tudyk. Whereabouts mm-hmm. was Jason David Frank in relation to your booth? Uh, so looking at, at, at the amusing thing is I don't think Jason David Frank was actually there on Thursday. So the guy, like the person he came to kill supposedly wasn't even there. That <laughs> he day. wasn't even uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> but had he been there, he would have been at the other end of the hall from where I was okay. on the third floor there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you, did you, did, did you see any of did you see any of it as it went down? No. Okay. No, I talked to one of the security guards that was involved in it. Uh huh. But I never actually saw any of it. It all happened on the second floor, I believe, which is where they have panels and things. Okay. And so it was something that happened completely removed from where we were. So theoretically, M- Mr. Sterling makes it through the 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 the, the front door. No security. Mm-hmm. No nothing's going on. He just he's able to get right clean through. No security, no metal detectors. Did you catch wind? How in the hell did he get busted? He got busted. Okay, so first of all, he showed up with a loaded shotgun, three loaded pistols, a combat knife and throwing stars okay yeah see in the in the report <laughs> in the in the report that that we got that we read he we, we have the loaded gun or the loaded shotgun we've got the pistols did not know that he was carrying rambo knives and shrieken oh yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> you can't kill a, a green ranger with a simple gun you've got to use throwing stars and, and and we also we also have to make sure to add to that list the body armor because that was part yes. of the charges that he received wearing body armor during the commission of a felony <laughs> right <laughs> uh, so basically what happened is this dude clearly troubled men- mentally oh sure uh, he'd been posting on Facebook that his plan was to show up there kill as many cops as he could and finish the job he'd started earlier to kill Jason David Frank. <laughs> the job he started earlier. <laughs> yeah, according to uh, the officer that's, uh, that I talked to that was in the area while they were talking to him, he said that he'd already started the job on him but couldn't kill him or something like that. They, it, he made it sound like he had tried previously and failed so <laughs> according to Jason David Frank, that never happened. And he's certainly not half dead or anything. So. Right, right. He's still he's still kicking. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they, 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 they had seen all that. But I mean, do you did you do you know offhand? Like like was he flashing one of the guns? No. Did, did somebody um, I peek? guess what or? happened was somebody saw it on Facebook and was like, Oh shit, my son is there. I'm gonna call the police and let them know about it. So they called the police and reported this Facebook post. And so then they sent out a thing on the radio that was like, be on the lookout for this guy. This is what he looks like. Everybody try and find him. Right. (laughs) And he was just chilling next to a railing on one of the floors. And they just they just cuffed and stuffed him right there. Yeah, yeah. He'd been taking photos of police officers surreptitiously on his phone, it sounds like. Um, so he'd definitely been scoping things out. <laughs> I, I I almost get the vibe that maybe he was planning it for the next day. But if so, why would you have all those weapons on you that day? Well, because how, 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 did, how did it say that he phrased it that, you know, some uh, 
Oh, uh, where the hell is it? Yeah, believe. Yeah, there are police officers that have kind faces in uniform, but they can be bad officers. And <laughs> and, and 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 he had his shit in self defense in case our officers gave him trouble, and that he would shoot to kill. I guess you do have to keep an eye out for those bad hombres. Because if he's running around <laughs> saying he's the Punisher, well, you know, you you yeah. gotta be you gotta be ready to go. Okay, so the prop ban did happen as a result of Sterling. Correct. Okay. And this entire weekend at Phoenix Comic Con was just overreaction after overreaction by the con run people. Right. Uh, they they <laughs> had a mandate from the police, the Phoenix police, that they're like, no more fake weapons at the show. And Phoenix was like, screw that. No more props for, for cosplay. If they're attached at all, if they can be removed, whether they're wings or goggles or guns or swords or wands, no props. Right, right. And they announced that uh, that day, that that night. They announced it. They sent out an email and they posted on Facebook about it. And then by morning, they'd come back around and been like, well, eh, no prop weapons. We've realized banning wings is stupid. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> cause that was, because I know that was a major concern. When, when you had stated that, that was one going to be, I honestly figured this is going to be maybe not as big a train wreck as Galacticon was. <laughs> right. But if you don't have cosplayers, you're looking at like 50% of your attendee base right. is gone. And, and that right there... It, I mean, people were being creative that had been there, but I mean, we're talking a Thursday half day. A lot of the people that were attending Friday and Saturday weren't there. They were traveling. They didn't have access to the internet, so they had no idea. So these guys would have to wait in line for this obscenely long, overly complex security checkout now in 180 <laughs> degree weather, and then right. turn around and take their shit back to the car and get in line again. Oh, yeah, I think that's... I think that's fairly accurate anyway <laughs> you know but but yeah i mean i mean like i say you know the wings the antenna the goggles the you know link shields i you know i mean if you got a fucking styrofoam sword i think you should be able to be okay with that well and they were for they were forbidding cardboard weaponry right right i talked to a cosplayer who had their it was not even shaped like a gun. It was just a large square piece of cardboard that they wrote gun in marker on it. Oh, and they actually – I watched a police officer and a security guard go over to them and confiscate their rectangle of cardboard. Oh, no shit. <laughs> I mean these guys were getting super creative and they were still getting shut down for the first hour or two of the show. Wow. But then they, but then after a while they let up and everything was all yeah. good. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I guess that that leads into the second, the next question, which here again, you can feel free to answer however you want. Uh, how how did all that shit affect affect uh, sales for vendors, artist alley, and all that? How, what was the ramifications? I talked to a lot of people that have done that show regularly mm -hmm. that said this was one of their worst shows of it that they've ever done. Yeah. Um, I did all right. I didn't do great, but I did all right. Mm -hmm. um, I, from what I'd been led to believe between us being up on that floor and all of the problems they were having, because it wasn't just that. There were issues where they – like we were supposed to be open till 7 on Friday mm -hmm. and they randomly announced over the intercom. They're like, hey, we know people have been in line for three or four hours. We're going to let the vendors all stay till 8.30. Okay. So without telling any of the vendors, they announced that we were all going to be there an hour and a half late. <laughs> and I made one $20 sale in that hour and a half that I sat there in my booth. Well, that's worth it. Yeah, right? Well, I <laughs> sent my, my buddy Devin, who's a co-host on my, my, my podcast, The Podcasket, I, I sent him out to the dinner that we'd arranged with all of our friends where we're like, hey, let's all meet at 7.30 or 8 and get some food on. And instead, I sat in the car after we got done because he was off getting his drink on while I was making that 20 bucks. Jesus. <laughs> So I would say, you know, I'm, I signed up for it. I'm doing it again next year, despite all of the weird mismanagement stuff that they did. Uh, there was stuff from the vendor's end as well that certainly affected things. Uh, but everyone I talked to there was so upset with how long they waited in line on Friday. Sure, sure. I mean, there were people there literally passing out from heat stroke and that kind of weather with their cosplay and everything. 
Uh, it just the Friday itself was a shit show. Right. Uh, Saturday and Sundays, they se- seemed to mostly get their shit together. There were a few vendor end things, like they'd screwed up on the re-upping, their website wasn't working. But as far as attendees were concerned, it sounded like everybody had a really good show f- uh, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So it evened so that's out. that's good. Yeah, it evened out after a while. Yeah. Yeah, I, everyone I talked to by the end of the weekend said they'd had a great show. It was just kind of that 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 pall that was left over Thursday and Friday that kind of screwed things up for people. Yeah, well, you know, and I mean a one shot deal like that. You know, I think if you if you go the second time, you know, as long as there isn't another, you know, fucked up crazy assassination attempt, I think you should, right. I think you should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've done like. 50 cons now and i've never had anything like that actually happen right no one has ever tried to smuggle shit in so i mean one in 50 you know that's not that bad when you consider how many hundreds of thousands of people that includes exactly you're talking two percent most people are killing for that kind of thing so you know yeah well pun not intended of course (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, so so with that, you got other shit coming up. So what else do you got going on? You got a couple of, you got you got some cons in California? Yeah, I'm headed down to on? California this coming weekend. I'll be at Sinister Creature Con and then Wizard World Sacramento. And then I'm up to Portland for Heroes and Villains. Then I've got Denver Comic Con after that. Uh, I'm a featured guest artist at Treasure Valley Comic Con in Nampa, Idaho in July. Uh, and then I'm just all over the place, Montana, Colorado, Oregon, Utah. So, so with that being said, now I, I hear again, I have, I have no leg to stand on. I have no room to talk because, you know, uh, uh, Enigma number four is like two years late. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm getting pressure from all sides on this one as, as, as the new cover artist for Enigma, how's, how's that cover for number five coming? <laughs> You know, amusingly, I am actually pretty close to it. Um, I just have a few little detail things to work in on it. I've I've finally picked up one of those Wacom companions. Oh, so I can work on it on the road. Okay, now and what's, that's huge for me. What's the companion? That's the one that doesn't need a computer to work. It's a tablet, but it's a fully functional Wacom Cintiq tablet. Oh, okay, so it's almost like that, you know, the Microsoft, what is that, the SmartBook or what the hell ever? Where you yeah, got, you whatever, know, the, the, the Pro Just Pen the Wacom one. version yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, only this one works. I can run full Photoshop. It, you don't have to use some workaround program or anything like that. Nice. So I, I'm just getting used to it. Like, I'm just getting all my files transferred over to it and everything. Mm-hmm. But it should dramatically speed up things. Because right now, like, I'm home for less than 50 hours before I turn around and leave again. Right. And, like, that's barely enough time to fucking restock and do some laundry, let alone get any artwork done. Sure. Because, like, I'm working on covers for you. I'm doing a comic book with Gigi Edgley and Ben Browder from Farscape. Mm-hmm. How's how how is that little project coming along? I don't I because I think the last time we had talked about it, you were kind of vague. You didn't really want to, you know, make any big thing. And and if you want me to edit it out, I will. But uh, yeah, no. How's that project with uh, with with uh, Gigi Edgley coming along? Uh, it's it's coming. Uh, she sent me some some script pages. They're actually expanding it into a film as well, and so they're um, they're starting to move towards that direction as well as the comic book. Mm-hmm. So she's kind of just sending me just straight up script pages for the movie, and then I'm going through and converting them to the comic book pages. And it should be really interesting. It's a really dark urban fantasy story, mm-hmm. and so it's uh, we're right now we're deciding what kind of like rating we're looking for, but I think it could skew the towards the r rating with it because there's some really super dark themes in it but it's still got this classic fairy tale element as well so it should be really interesting i'm actually doing some uh reference photos and stuff while i'm down in los angeles kind of going to the beach and that kind of thing while i'm down there and get some photos for it sure do you have any idea how jealous of you i am <laughs> Dude, Why? you are you are out there. You are fucking killing it, man. I am I am so fucking proud of you. You have no idea. I mean, you know, whether it's translating, whether it's translating and making sure, you know, there's groceries on the table and bills are getting paid, I, you know, I have no idea. But I know Yeah, that's that's another matter entirely. I've got a plumber trying to part my wall right now with a busted pipe they're dealing with and I'm just like, "Thank God for 90 days same as cash." That's all I can say. <laughs> So with all the conventions and all that type of shit that you're doing, you are so busy. 
Deeply Dapper, anything else that you want to you want to whore out? Any, any anything special with the Deeply Dapper website or anything else going on you want to give a shout to? You know, I, the, we were doing a monthly Kickstarter for enamel pins, but we've kind of backed off on that right now until I can find a more reliable per, uh, manufacturer for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, l- check out our podcast. I've got two podcasts I do. Um, you know, they're not as good as the Quad M show, obviously. Oh, but please. Stop. If you like Stop horror you. and like 80s stuff, you can check out the Deeply Dapper Dispatches podcast, which is our horror uh, one. And that's a weekly that I do with my buddy Devin. Mm-hmm. And we do a lot of con reports on that one, too, as well as watching horror movies and drinking beer. And then I have a monthly one that's a really – it's a long format one. I think this this most recent episode was something like four and a half hours long. Jesus. <laughs> and we – yeah, my buddy Tom and I recorded over the course of a month. And we cover like art technique, uh, different nerd things. We do movie reviews. But mostly we just go off on terrible-ass tangents for hours. Mm-hmm. So – <laughs> and that one's called Robot Kraken. And that's the crack. You want to listen to that. So you, so you changed the name of Deeply Dapper Dispatches to the, the Deeply Dapper Dispatches. Yeah, casket. we just call it the 3D Podcasket now. 3D Podcasket. Okay. All right. Yeah, see, that rolls <laughs> off the tongue. That rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured, you know, it's it's got that horror kick to it. I do a lot of horror conventions. Um, I'm a guest at a few of them this year, and I was like, you know, let's let's focus that one a little more on the horror end of things. And no one was using the word podcasket, and I was like, well, pff, let's do that. <laughs> and I have no idea why they wouldn't. That's genius. Yeah, all right. You, you, you need to hurry up. You need to hurry up and get that shit trademarked. <laughs> Or else, care. all of a sudden, the Quad M cast, the Quad M podcast, it'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I barely Remember, have enough. I know where you live, <laughs> dude. Don't worry, you're safe. I barely have enough time for one fucking show. I'm not right. running two. You yeah, I don't, I, I'm literally just on Robot Kraken this month because I did the interstitial stuff. It's all just Tom interviewing other people because I've been so busy that I'm just like, how about this? I'll just pop in every now and again and be like and that was tom and blake as they talked about the 80s That's it, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well so anywho kids this guy is a man of many talents he is an inch deep and a mile wide this guy's got so much shit going on uh, Charmin can't keep up with him dude Chris, <laughs> Christopher McClanahan, Deeply Dapper Dispatches and dot com and all that shit, man. Hey, brother, thank you for stopping by and, and telling us, re- reliving the traumatic experience that was Phoenix, man. I appreciate it, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm just glad I didn't get shuriked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother. Thank you. Have a good one. Hey, you too. All right. Well, let's go ahead here and we will take our third and final break and we will come back. We'll do some Reddit. And maybe a pick of the week. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Squad M Show. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. In a city where corruption rules the streets, only one man can stop the serial killer known as the Blood Bandit. James Kurt, a former police officer turned private investigator, must race against the clock to stop the madman before he achieves his ultimate diabolical goal. When JK's brother Alex is thought killed in the line of duty, and mysteriously returns with no memory of his past life, the stakes are raised even higher. Enigma, the comic book series from Quad M Productions, written and illustrated by T.J. Damon, with colors and effects by Jason Vickers. Enigma, order your copy at quadmproductions.com today. Reviewing film and TV from yesterday and today. It's the Quad M Movie Minute. June 2nd saw the release of Wonder Woman in theaters, and DC now finally has a movie that they can be proud of and hopefully continue to build the DC Cinematic Universe around. Starring Gal Gadot and Chris Pine, the movie centers around Wonder Woman's Amazon beginnings as the Princess of Themyscira, her journey into the man's world, and all the ensuing wackiness involved. The film is epic, the story is great, and even though it is not Zack Snyder directing the film, it still maintains a Snyder-esque look about the film, which I'm guessing is what the DCCU wants to continue to have. 
The movie goes through with very little downtime and actually takes a lighter tone than Man of Steel or Dawn of Justice, which actually is a breath of fresh air and hopefully will continue forth with later installments in the DC Universe. While it's not a movie that is going to crack my top five of the greatest comic book films of all time, it certainly has a very solid place in the top ten. This is an excellent movie. Don't miss out on it in the theaters. Quad M gives Wonder Woman a 9 out of 10. Third and final segment of this here Quad M Show. Again, we are your hosts. I am TJ. And I'm Mark. Oh, yeah, of course. Really great work, bitches. And this segment is brought to you in part by Deeply Dapper. Hey, are you looking for that one-of-a-kind gift for the geek who has it all? Maybe a little something out of the ordinary for yourself? Well, look no further than Deeply Dapper. Ranging from The Walking Dead to Doctor Who to Labyrinths to Star Wars and well beyond, Deeply Dapper has it all. From original art prints to metal flasks, handcrafted light switch plates and key hangers to handmade soaps, all based on your favorite Nerd World properties. Visit the online store today at DeeplyDapper.com. That's DeeplyDapper.com. Deeply Dapper, better living through tentacles. Ah, yeah. Ah, quite a damn good interview we had with him. Right? <laughs> it was amazing. Changed my life. <laughs> Well, you know, like I say, it's one of those things I was I was I was, I was quasi jealous about not being able to uh, to get to the Phoenix convention. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, after all that shit transpired and all the all the whoop de doos and assassination attempts. Yeah, and, I can't wait. For I'm glad I didn't lose money. That's all. <laughs> you know what? Also, makes me glad I don't lose money. What's that? Reddit fun. Yeah. <laughs> Reddit fun with Jason. Oh, all right. Well, Mr. Marty Man, good sir. Yes, sir. What is, what is what does the hive mind have for us this week? <laughs> this week, we've got <laughs> parents of porn stars slash prostitutes. How did you react to knowing your child's career choice? <laughs> Hookers. <laughs> Hookers. <laughs> There's been a theme for this. Apparently, yeah. This week's train wrecks, porn, and and just train wrecks and porn. Train wrecks and I, porn. What more do you need? Though, I though? think that will be the, the. I think that will be the the title of of this week's show. Train wrecks and porn stars. I like it. <laughs> you know what? What what would you do if you found out one of the kiddos <sighs> decided to go into the adult enter adult entertainment industry? Yeah, I uh, I could never look at porn again. I know that. <laughs> On the off chance that it were to just jump out at me, I'd probably... <laughs> Whoops! Yeah, I'd lose it. I would lose it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I can probably... Well, you know, because of the fact that, uh, you know, for, for, for brief instances, uh, during during my, I won't say childhood, but, but my teenage years, mm-hmm. um, I was... In how's the best way to put it? Not involved, but uh, I, I was around the local titty bar yeah. in Helena. Yeah, and uh, the you know the reason being my the the, the bar was it, was it was actually two bars. You know, one was like your regular go to place, live music, you know, have a good old time. Yeah, and then the other bar was the titty bar. Yeah, well, my mom was a bartender over on you know the main the main regular bar, and she bartended on the other side as well. Um. And, you know, as such, you know, I was able to, in my, my teenage high school years, I had a, I had the job cleaning the bar. Swamping. Swamping. That was, you know, that was a game. I'll tell you what, for fucking high school, it was some pretty goddamn good money, too. Oh, I bet. You know, because it was... Back then, too, $5 could go a long way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that Three was... quarters of a tank of gas, and you could still buy a six-pack. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> That's exactly what I was making. You bet. <laughs> Oh fuck me! But you know, you know, and so I think, I think just being around those emotional train wrecks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, you know, if my kid had got involved in that shit, someone's getting an axe handle taken to him. Right, you're going to boarding school. Daddy, it wasn't my choice. I don't care if it was your choice or not. This, 
This whooping stick needs to meet somebody's ass. <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. You're me. We're having to have us a come to Jesus meeting. And you two motherfuckers need Jesus. And it doesn't matter whether it was your choice or not. Guilty by association, they is. Yes. So what? So let's go ahead and hear what the what the Borg has to say in response to this round of questioning. All right. Navy Prox says. When Stoya was voted most beautiful woman in New York, she was about she was asked about this. She said her parents were supportive, but her dad has a hard time looking at porn now because he he always sees his daughter's flashlight ads <laughs> on the side of the website. <laughs> Uh, yeah, see, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Daddy, I couldn't handle that. Daddy can't hit the hub no, no more. You're done. <laughs> done, buddy. Nothing but. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, get your blood worked up just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, Wonder Mew says, late to the party, but here's mine. My sister became a stripper, and I was horrified. Because she'd been sexually abused as a child, and stripping seemed like the wrong, wrong way to work through that trauma. She asked me not to tell my mom. Mom eventually bullied the info out of me, and amazingly blamed me for my sister's choice. So, that was fun. (laughs) (laughs) Mom's in denial. I I ain't giving her the axe handle. (laughs) You're the one that gets it. (laughs) Then mom found out how much money my crazy hot sister was making by stripping, and she decided she was okay with it, provided nobody found out how much (laughs) my sister made so how my sister made so much money. I worked a normal (laughs) job. She's in exports and imports. She's in the spice trade. Yeah, spice trade. (laughs) I worked a normal job. My mother could tell the neighbors about, but since my sister could make in one weekend what it took me four months to make, my job didn't matter. Mom (laughs) actually started shaming me for not being as financially well off as my sister. (laughs) Jesus Christ. This this mom is great. This mom is awesome. I want to meet her. (laughs) Despite the fact that she was ashamed of my sister's vocation. My sister developed the all-too-common stripper habits of drugs and booze. But hey, as long as she was making bank and showing up at mom's house in nice cars, wearing designer clothes, mom magically didn't notice. When me and my other relatives and friends tried to bring my sister's copious drug abuse issues to my mother's attention, she cut off contact with most of them and accused me of lying. The social status of my sister's money, even though my mother didn't get any of that money, was more important. Yeah, this mom's got some issues. That is that is some jacked up bullshit right there, man. Right. Yeah, but then, oh yeah, it keeps going. <laughs> when my sister died, my mother became her biggest apologist, telling everyone what a tortured soul she was and how damaged and what a fighter she was, trying to fight all of her demons with booze and drugs. My sister is up in for Conomet. Yeah, I can't go much more after this. This is craziness. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be... Yeah. <laughs> the dark seedy the underbelly dark seedy, of Reddit. Right? Yeah. Bring a funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, there's nothing funnier than a fucking code of, than a than a, than a, than, a, than an enablist mother, a drug and booze addled stripper that fucking dies an early death and the son is 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 just sitting there going, Well, I still have my shitty job and I'm alive. <laughs> right. Thanks, Mom. Um, oh jeez. Slayer 991. Parents found out daughter was a stripper slash escort, used her to extort nearly three million from a retired software executive. Daughter dies of an OD. Parents convicted and her in prison. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. God. Yeah. Oh, who said we weren't bringing the funny with this one? Right. <laughs> Holy cow. Man. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess if you're gonna fucking find out that you're you know that, that your that your daughter's doing in the shit, you might as well take advantage of it, I suppose. Right. <laughs> Dairy Brain says, 
Many years ago, a Romanian girl used to work for me on first-line support. She was pretty good and spoke five languages quite well. She had moved to the UK for a better life with a young daughter she had at 16. She got fed up with UK and weather and decided to move to Spain's Little England and became a dancer at a strip club, earning far more than I could ever pay. She seemed to enjoy that kind of work and even now at 37 is a go-go dancer in some Spanish club. Anyway, up until 2015, Spain's age of consent was pretty low compared to most places, and her daughter, by all accounts, was pretty wild child, who seemed to be openly encouraged by many when turning 18 to start in strip clubs before quickly moving to live sex shows and escorting. Jesus Christ! Right? So the mom, yeah, started, and then the daughter... Keeping up the family so, fucking tradition. Right? Good lord. At 20, her mother told her to move to the UK and still escort as the money can be considerably better. So she tours around the UK and her mother has had n no issue with it. Knowing I wouldn't judge the mother, asked me to catch up with the daughter face to face every now and then when she was in location nearby to make sure she is okay. We're both pretty open when meeting, but... It is still a little weird asking her about her business and wondering how many dudes she's banged that day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's kind of the, the first thing you want to ask. Right. Have you uh, washed yourself? <laughs> Clean out your machine. You got some hand sanitizer? <laughs> <laughs> that actually makes me wonder. What I, I, I guess I would have to look that up. What is Spain's age of consent? I'm thinking 16, probably. I did at, 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 a, at, at the most... It would have to be 16. If it's anything... Dude, anything it's lower a, than that is fucking then, insane. Then those Spaniards are pretty fucked up. Waquas Hussein 7. I'm an ex-meth user. I was spending 400 loonies a month on my addiction. When I became broke, I had to resort to other ways to make money, so I became a gigolo. <laughs> I only did my dealers first. <laughs> But then, oh no! <laughs> he was a gay gigolo! <laughs> but then word got out and I started getting more customers. And a meth head, don't, don't forget that. He's a, <laughs> a triple threat kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew I'd enter this industry, especially because I was a huge homophobe at the beginning. Anyway, one day I went down to a <laughs> client's house and he asked me if I would stuff tangerines in his anus <laughs> and eat them. I sat down and I thought, how fucked, <laughs> how the fuck did I get here? Well, no shit. Managed to escape when he was in the shower and decided to turn my life around. It's been over four years since I took any sort of drugs. I am now living <laughs> in a place much further away than my original location. How, so many years, how many years since he took penis? <laughs> right? He probably still takes penis. <laughs> <laughs> original location so as to not be reminded of my previous life or customers. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked, it's been over four years since you took any sort of drugs, but when was the last time you had a tangerine? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and and just for the for the for the uh, uh, quizzically, uh, sixteen is 16. The, the age of consent in Spain. I figured. Gabby Gab says, "My sister was an erotic dancer for quite some time. Might still be. She doesn't know. We don't talk much anymore. <laughs> and I had to cut her out of, and I had to out her to my parents." Long story short, she was a known problem with alcohol and called me when I lived in a different city two hours away to pick her up at the strip club because she was belligerently drunk. So I had to call my parents to go get her, had to tell them where she was. Eventually, they put two and two together. It's not something they're proud of. My dad and I had had a talk about it when he was had a talk about it, and he pretty much said, she's my daughter and I love her no matter what and I want her to be safe. Because my sister was making so much money, and she was 25 and still living with my parents, my dad helped her plan her finances with her new money a bit more. He also asked my sister to call her whenever she was 
walking from the club to her car because he was worried creeps would follow her. I don't really know how my mom reacted, and I'm not sure if my sister still dances, but I know neither of them ever shamed her, yelled at her, told her to quit, etc. I think she's since stopped because she still lives with my parents and asked to borrow money from me recently. <laughs> well, so much for that financial planning. <laughs> uh, all right. Your parents are cool people. That was like the coolest parents of any story we've read so far. Geek underscore charming says, not a parent, but my friend who does webcam shows says her mother was initially upset until she told her about the ridiculous amount of money she's making. All of a sudden, her mother was pretty okay with it. <laughs> this thing, if you bring in the bucks, man. If you bring in the bucks, it fucking, it fucking... Nobody questions. It justifies the whole goddamn thing. Right? <laughs> all right, well, we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll wrap this up, because pretty much these are all just... <laughs> Right. <laughs> Train wreck kids and enabling parents. <laughs> yeah, that that's pretty much it. <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm over two on the Reddit's. I'm not. Well, no, because I picked them. Funny. Well, I picked them. Well, you know what I need to do is just kind of take you know like as I'm as I'm drifting off at night. Mm -hmm. Just I just need to go through and you know find the and, good and, ones and, and, yeah. and pick pick them and and save them because that's what jason was doing i wanted i wanted to try that but apparently you can't drive a car and look on the internet at the same time it's so. not advised no it's frowned upon so. <laughs> <laughs> all right well as we wrap it up uh do uh do you good sir have any picks of the week for the week this week uh picks of the week uh you know i've been uh nerding out to a game called golf clash I don't know if you're into golf games. You, you I know you. I know you've been down on that for for some time now. I have been to where people have to say, "Hey, do we have a bartender here? What the fuck?" <laughs> That's only happened a handful of times. I can't play it when I bartend because. Hold on, I'm trying for eagle. Right, <laughs> fuckers, told you not to talk to me in my backswing. <laughs> you guys are pricks. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's too chaotic to try to do it at the bar anymore. I tried, but no, I can't. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's just a strictly late night. So is it Once just I a single home. play? Is it a single player, and then you're just up on competing leaderboards, or is it a multiplayer? How how does that work? It's a single player, but it like pairs you up with people all over the world, uh -huh. and then they run tournaments every now and again. But really, it's just you do a one hole shootout against someone, and then if you guys both happen to tie, then they do another shootout closest to the pin wins oh so you're you not get playing. money and jewels and clubs and you're not playing a round of 18 then no it's like just that. one one hole at a time against different people is it different holes oh yeah like it like yeah there's it? like 11 different courses or something oh okay okay yeah so there's plenty of shit out oh there there's for, lots of stuff but you got to build up it's one of those things you have to build up and then you get these the higher levels you know and Un you've unlocked yeah you've unlocked tour eight sure yeah okay all right. i don't know I, I dig it it's it's fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't purchased yet. It's been out for a couple weeks now, but my pick of the week is Injustice 2. Mm. Oh, goddamn. It's, you know, it. I'm a comic book guy, mm -hmm. and the guys over at NetherRealm Studios are the ones that uh, uh, do the Mortal Kombat games and stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, they got the license for, for, for doing the DC fighting game, and Injustice uh, Gods Among Us came out what two three years ago a couple I think. years yeah i bought it when that one came out that, yeah that's a good one and 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 they ramp it up with the second one from everything that i have seen nice. the first up the the, the the graphics are beautiful yeah i mean it is a beautiful game to look at you know uh, uh like the, the, the facial the face motions with, with with everything it's it's oh um now with the with like say the ultimate edition that had come out of the first game um, you know that came with all the downloadable content. Uh -huh. You know that came out with all the different skins, mm -hmm. and and you know you wanted to play as uh, you know characters from the Red Sun version of DC Comics. So then you got to play as Russian Superman and Russian Batman and all that shit. And, <laughs> you know all the various what to do's there. Um, they kind of still have that, but but they have what they call premiere skins. Yeah, and so like you know you've got your 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 white guy. Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You get the premiere skin of the John Stewart 
the black Green Lantern that mm-hmm. everyone knows from like the cartoons and yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. And it's actually Phil Lamar doing the voice. I mean, it's not just a skin, oh. but like they redo, they, they, the whole new voices, everything for it. That's awesome. You've got, I mean, you've got like with Flash, you've got the old school, like the Flash of Earth 2, the Flash from the 1940s, Jay Garrick. You got Reverse Flash, different voice actors, different shit being said, same power sets, that type of thing. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, so they, they've gone off the charts there. Um, I don't know, the whole slew of different characters. So if there were, you know, kind of throwaway characters you weren't really digging on playing back in the old game, like uh, Raven and Killer Frost, mm-hmm. they're gone. Mm. Now you've got Gorilla Garage, you've got Swamp Thing, you've got, oh, Christ, some of the new guys. I mean, Supergirl is in there. Um, Dr. Fate, you know, I mean, just like like they got rid of like the Drek cast characters. Yeah. And brought in some kick-ass ones. Did they bring in any more Mortal Kombat characters? Well, they're starting with the down with the downloadable uh-huh. content, yeah. which this is my one knock against Warner Brothers is these guys are the whores when it comes to fucking microtransaction bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like when I got when I because I, I got Injustice twice. Mm-hmm. I got it when it first came out for the PS3, mm-hmm. and during that time. I got the season pass, which gave me like the first four downloadable characters. Yeah. But then they threw like another fucking four characters at you that you had to fucking go and buy. And I'm like, you know, you know, fuck you guys. You know, oh, we've got this skins pack. We've got this pack. We've got this pack. You're paying 60 bucks for a fucking game. And then you end up paying like oh, about another hundred dollars for the, all the for additional all the, shit. Yeah. That Just for us old school gamers. Squeezing you for everything. Oh, well, yeah. Right. And for us old school gamers, all that shit would have been on the disc to begin with. Exactly. And, and there are some companies that do it right yeah you know like uh when witcher 3 came out they had like a um a, what, like an expansion pack ish type thing for mm. downloading it was like 10 bucks mm. and it gives you a whole new fucking game a whole new side story whole new everything and it's like like a small game for like 10 bucks yeah. and it's like okay fuck that is that's that's how you fucking do it yeah warner brothers will just nickel and dime you to fucking death and it's it sucks but apparently in this first go round of downloadable characters, I don't know specifically who's been released, but I know that Sub Zero and Raiden mm. or Raiden, yeah. whatever you want to pronounce it, um, I know that they will be in that first two of four. Cool. And, you know, here again, I get Nether Realms has to, you know, kind of get their shit in too. Mm-hmm. Um I just don't know that the Mortal Kombat characters fit no, in they the don't. injustice. They you really know, don't. but by the same token, in that first inju- in the first Injustice game, Scorpion was Scorpion pretty cool. Scorpion was in there, yeah. He had some cool shit. He was pretty cool to play as. So right. it's it's kind of one way or the other. You know, the way the way Nether Realms did it right with more with the Mortal Kombat series mm-hmm. was having like fucking Jason and Freddy and Leatherface and then yeah. the Alien and the Predator. You know, those tied in well. They did. Mortal Kombat, ah, I don't know, but you know what the fuck ever. Um, I haven't purchased it yet. I. Don't honestly with and here again, with the way Warner Brothers is, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to wait until they release like the ultimate game of the year, gold edition. There you go. That'll just have all the shit in it and right. maybe pay you know seventy instead of sixty or some shit like that. It's a small price to pay. So then that way, I don't purchase the game and then have buyer's remorse when the new shit comes out after mm-hmm. having spent ungodly amounts of money on it. But from everything that I have seen and bared witness to on YouTube, if you're into fighting games, if you're into DC Comics, dude, you Must gotta have. get this. is a fucking awesome game, and it continues the story from the first Injustice. Oh, cool! So it's 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 going right in. And you know, if you guys pick up that PS4, because we you know we you we, and the we have and little lady about talked about uh, yeah. getting that for the uh, for the Jason for Friday the Thirteenth. Oh yeah, here's another reason to pick it up. Yeah, I think we'll do that. It's worth it. Definitely. It's worth it. Like I said, I, I've got PS4. I, I'm not bothering with Xbox One. Yeah, no, I like my Xbox, but... Where some people will sit there and tell you, You need to get the Xbox One. God damn. Because, you know, my daughter's got it the Friday the 13th. And that's where I'm getting the game so we can all play. So you need to spend the money and go get the Xbox One. Right. So you can jam with us. <laughs> Fucker. Okay. Just make another bet. <laughs> 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 Only the ones that I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> Only the ones you'll win. Well. All right. Well, good sir. If we have nothing left to pimp, promote, propagate, or pander for the evening. No. That.
So we'll wrap it up for this week's episode of the Quad M Show. Hey, gang, don't forget, uh, 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 like and share on the Book of Face. Follow us on the Twitter. And also to make sure, you know, a five-star rating never hurt nobody. It sure didn't. So give us that five-star rating and a, re- uh, and a review. And, and everything will be right with the world. You might be able to listen to me try to butcher through it one of these episodes. Be, <laughs> you, you, give, you give a five-star rating and a review, you're better than a stripper. This is true. You're better than the train wrecks that we have talked about today. Until next week, kids, this is TJ. And this is Marty. And we will see you all later, gang. Take care. Have a good one. You've been listening to The Quad M Show. Copyright 2017. Quad M Productions. If you have any comments, questions, queries, quibbles, or concerns, email us at quadmcomics at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at quadmcomics. or confused get information or a pamphlet at most pharmacies or a health clinic if you need help 